Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about noise in amplifiers. And it is important as we are uh, trying to estimate uh, the non-idealities, the imperfections uh, that may lead to unwanted results in amplifier circuits. Uh, it's important to know what are the different sources of noise that we may encounter and uh, also to be able to perform some noise calculations so that we can estimate uh, the effect or the amount of noise that we should expect at the output of an amplifier. Um, there are different uh, sources of noise in amplifier, and so um, we can start by perhaps talking about uh, different types of noise and different sources of noise. Uh, the most common one to encounter is uh, what's referred to as thermal noise. Uh, sometimes you'll see it referred to as uh, Johnson noise. And uh, it's the type of noise associated with resistors. Um, and it's uh, the spectral density of the thermal noise is proportional to the square root of resistance. Um, and so every resistor uh, with increasing resistor values, you get increased values of thermal noise. As the name indicates, it's also dependent on temperature. And so as the temperature increases, you should expect your thermal noise to increase as well. Um, thermal noise is uh, white noise, and that means that it's typically distributed over the entire frequency spectrum. Um, there is in semiconductors, and op amps are made out of semiconductor materials. Uh, sometimes you'll uh, hear mention of short noise. And uh, short noise is, uh, you will also sometimes see it referred to as current noise. And uh, it is due to the discrete nature of current flow in semiconductors. And it's going to be proportional to uh, the square root of the bias current through your semiconductors. Um, short noise and uh, as, as some other sources of noise in semiconductors is not a white type of noise. Uh, it's frequency dependent. And um, you will see that for uh, the overall amount of noise that you will encounter in a semiconductor typically experiences an increase at low temperatures. And uh, that effect is called um, flicker noise or one over F noise. And typically you'll refer to that effect when you're talking about very low frequencies because you experience that increase um, in, noise, in noise levels at those low frequencies. Uh, so that, that will be... The, the one over a or flicker noise. Um, sometimes, so I'm going to say short noise um, uh, due to current flow in semiconductors. Uh, popcorn noise is a term that you will also see um, used often. And uh, popcorn noise is due to impurities in the semiconductor. And it used to be uh, more common uh, back in the day, but uh, nowadays, um, typically the purity of the semiconductors is good enough that, you know, the popcorn noise is not a really concerning source of noise nowadays. Uh, normally, the way that you will perform noise calculations is that you will um, identify the different sources of noise. Sometimes, most of the time, you will have certain sources that will be dominant, and uh, then you will estimate, you will pick your dominant sources, and you will estimate the power spectral density of your noise. Uh, and uh, you will typically represent the noise as root mean squared. So, noise typically represented as an RMS value. And as the name indicates, it's just uh, the square root of the mean of the noise signal. So and the mean for a continuous signal, you can just integrate over one period. Um, and it's the mean, so the average of the signal square. So root mean squared, just exactly what the name indicates. Uh, there is an important concept that we are going to talk about, and that is the concept of noise gain. And so once we identify the sources of noise in an amplifier, and typically we'll be able to gather the, the most relevant ones from the datasheet, 
in the form of offset voltage, uh, input offset currents, etc. Uh, the noise gain is basically going to tell us how um, this different how this noise gets amplified by the amplifier, basically. Uh, and so it is an important parameter. It's an important figure of merit. Uh, specifically that because the noise gain also um, is the one that determines the uh, stability of the amplifier as well as the bandwidth of the amplifier. And you may be uh, aware or remember perhaps from previous courses that, oh yes, the, you know, the gain of an amplifier uh, plays a role in the stability of the amplifier or specifically the relationship between the gain and the phase shift. And uh, typically in approximations, we have been using the signal gain in those calculations. Same thing when you calculate, you know, the gain bandwidth product uh, being a constant. And so you est you can estimate the bandwidth of the closed loop amplifier by knowing its gain and so forth. Um, normally, we have been talking about the signal gain, but, but we should have been talking about the noise gain. If you want to be more proper, um, the noise gain is the one that plays a role in both stability and bandwidth. Uh, and so we're going to see how to calculate the noise gain, the noise gain of an amplifier. And, uh, and then we're going to um, see in which circumstances we can use the signal gain as opposed to the noise gain for those calculations and in what circumstances we really should be using the noise gain uh, in order not to incur large errors. Uh, so... Uh, for noise calculation purposes, um, I'm going to call, you know, the noise circuit model. We're going to typically um, like put together all the different sources of noise and lump them into a single noise source that contains all the main sources of noise. And so the way we're going to represent the noisy amplifier it's going to be as uh, first a, a noiseless amplifier, so an ideal amplifier, and then a lumped element, uh, a voltage source, which basically represents the different uh, noise sources. And I'm going to call that VNI as a noise input voltage or, or noise voltage applied to the input. Um, and now you you know you've heard me talk about some of the noise sources uh, being related to currents, but uh, you know it is assumed that those currents are going to flow through some resistors, causing some voltage drops. And actually, the voltage is how we observe the noise. So we can lamp them like this. Uh, you can also think this will be considered in the noises as uh, noise uh, RTI noise or noise referred to input. Sometimes you will see the noise calculations as RTO or refer to output noise. And, uh, and so they will give, be giving you the V and O value or the um, noise output uh, voltage value. But they're both related by the noise gain, which is typically represented as a case of N. So the noise output voltage will be the noise gain times the noise input voltage. So whether they give you the, the noise quantity as RTI referred to input or RTO referred to output, you should be able to calculate the other one if you are able to find the noise gain. Now, this parameter noise gain, that's the one that we are going to be focusing on in this video. And... Um, and again, the, the noise gain, basically what it represents is just this. It represents uh, the gain that uh, the noise, that uh, a source of noise applied to the input of the amplifier will experience. Um, it Again, it is important because it's going to determine, it's the one that's going to be determining the stability of the system as well as the bandwidth of the system and other things. Uh, it, the noise gain should not be confused with other noise figures. Uh, or noise figures of merit as the noise factor or the noise figure, uh, which is typically applied to RF or uh, TV systems. Uh, and that basically gives you a measure of uh, the signal to noise ratio, or rather the degradation of the signal to noise ratio from input to output. That will be a ratio of the SNR signal to noise ratio um, at the input versus the SNR signal to noise ratio at the output. 
the noise factor will be just the simple ratio of the two. The noise figure will be the noise factor measured in decibels. Um, but in any case, that's just a ratio of, of signal to noise ratios. Um, it's not related to the noise gain. It's a, it's a different concept. Um, now, the effect of noise in, um, uh, in amplifiers, or the effect of, uh, I should say instead of noise, the effect of finite gain in amplifiers can be expressed in terms of the noise gain. Um, so, I should say effect of finite gain Amplifiers can be expressed in terms of Kn, the noise gain, as the follows. Uh, the closed loop gain of an amplifier uh, can be expressed as the ideal closed loop gain. Um, and by ideal, we mean the ideal case when the uh, the open loop gain is equal to infinity, which we know is never going to be exactly the case, uh, divided by 1 plus the noise gain divided by A. Now, this should resemble the expression that we have previously seen, uh, which basically was the ACL ideal divided by 1 plus 1 over A times beta. Um, and and this equality sort of it gives you um, what the mathematical expression for the noise gain is. It is actually from, we can see from this equality here, that Kn is actually equal to 1 over beta. Um, so that will be the way of calculating Kn. A more um, standard way of calculating the noise gain, sometimes also referred to as the imperfection gain, uh, is to follow the, the following methodology. So calculating Kn, since it is the noise that it is, excuse me, the gain that uh, the RTI noise or the, the noise um, source will experience when applied at the non-inverted input of the amplifier, all we have to do is de-energize all the sources from the amplifier and then apply a test source at the input, at the non-inverted input always, uh, simulating that VNI, that uh, source of noise, and then see what will be the gain that that source, that uh, noise source will experience. Uh, and so for number one, uh, de-energize all external sources. And number two, apply a test source, a test uh, noise source, perhaps I should call it, at non-inverting input and calculating the gain. And that's basically going to give you um, the noise gain. Um, we are going to take a look at some examples, uh, specifically two, uh, the calculating noise gain for a non-inverting amplifier and for an inverting amplifier. We're going to be doing that in the next video. Thank you.